Hi Grade 1, I'm going to continue reading Stella Luna. Now when we left off from our last reading, lots of bats had gathered around to look at Stella Luna because she was acting like a bird. And you wrote some awesome compound sentences about that. So I'm going to read a little bit more today and let's see what happens. Stella Luna. In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night, as mother bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and as useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. The dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold, could hold on no longer. Down, down, she dropped. Thump, Stella Luna landed head first in a soft downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry. Ew, but not for the crawly things that Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs, even though they tasted awful and her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked sleeping hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces and she slept in the nest at night. She didn't hang by her feet and she behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. And one by one, Pip, Flitter, Fluff and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter and Fluff landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We'd better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. 
the three anxious little birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, oh, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You're hanging by your thumb, so that makes you upside down. I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up, the creature said. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird, and Stella Luna told them her story. You ate bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But, but it's night time, said Stella Luna. We can't fly in the dark or we'll crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the dark. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, said Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter and Flap. And that's where we're going to stop, Grade 1. How exciting that Stella Luna has found her mother. But there's still some more of the story, so I think there'll be a few more adventures just yet. You'll have to tune in next time to see how our story ends. Have a lovely day.